5,000 hotels in the United States, over 60% of the hotels are actually owned by small businesses. Mm -hmm. So that means if you and I, we come together, we partner and buy a hotel, we create an LLC that's considered a small business, right? Um, It's less than 2% of the hotels are owned by African-Americans and then less than 1% of the hotels are actually owned by um, African-American women. Welcome to House Rich, the real estate show. We talk to average people that have done above everything in real estate. Today, we're going to go into the hotel industry. So we have uh, Devon Reeves, the chief hospitality, hospitality strategist of the um, Vaughn Group. And so she basically teaches people how to how to buy hotels, how to get into the hotel industry. So um, a pretty cool topic. We've only uh, been into the commercial industry uh, once so far on the podcast. So um, if you introduce yourself to the folks, please. Sure, sure, sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Davon Reese, president and founder of the Von Group or chief hospitality strategist All right. of the Von Group. Uh, we are a hotel consulting as well as a hotel investment firm. Oh, okay, awesome. So um, can you jump into your, your background a little bit? Because I think just it's interesting um, getting into the hotel industry to begin with, because I think a lot of folks look at it as, you know, they look at, you know, the hotel, they are expensive, but folks look at them as these huge expensive assets that they would never even think to maybe get into the industry. Could you talk about kind of your background and what kind of got you um, pointed in this direction to begin with, please? Sure. Yeah, I actually got started off as a front desk agent at the uh, Hyatt Regency Atlanta. Uh, so uh, hotel ownership or commercial real estate ownership was not the topic of discussion at the dinner table growing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so something that I learned uh, more so probably my later years, probably once I got into my 20s and start hanging around other folks who own hotels and we were the same age. Okay. And so... um. So what, what made you say, hey, I want to buy or I want to get into the industry to begin with? Like, what was kind of like the, the trigger point that said, hey, this is this is for me? Because you've been doing this for about 14 years, right? Right. So the, host, the hotel industry is like two sides. You got operations and you got the ownership side, right? And so the operations side, that's where I got my start off as a front desk agent. I didn't know anything about ownership. And really how I got into the hospitality industry, I, I needed a job. And an opportunity came, it was like $10 an hour and I thought I was going to be rich. So really that's how I got into the operation side. And then once I saw or learned about the ownership side and saw nobody was making $10 an hour really on that side, they were making a lot of money on that side. I said, okay, this is the side where I need to be. Um, And it wasn't a lot of people who looked like me and it was a lot of women. And so I said, okay, this is the side I really need to be. Because normally when it's a, when you don't see a lot of folks of color or a lot of women, it's usually a lot of money to be made in that room. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> so did, did you have like a, a mentor or somebody that kind of kind of led you that way? Or I, I was fortunate to have a lot of mentors um, growing in growing up in the industry. Um, really really just diversifying my, my, my network and joining organizations that wasn't just, that were just people, they were different. They looked different. And so they came from different backgrounds and by me joining those different organizations that exposed me to different people, um, which brought me into the, the hotel ownership side. So in the beginning stages of my career, my mentors are more so from the operation side, not necessarily from the ownership side, because they were in operations. And then once I got into the ownership side, then my mentor and my, my mentorship and my network circle started to change um, because I started getting involved with this as far as with, with the ownership. So fortunately, I did. I was fortunate enough to have a lot of members, uh, mentors. Oh, okay, thank you. And the, the networking groups, were they like um, hospitality or hotel specific or were they just kind of like general uh, networking groups that you got into? Uh, networking groups that I got into. Um, so the American Hotel Lodging Association um, had under 30 gateway. And um, I was a part of that group, the National Society of Minorities and Hospitality. That's a collegiate organization. That was more focused on operations. Um, let's see, from a hotel ownership perspective, eh, I got it. Actually, I got an internship, non-paid internship after I graduated from college. Um, and that was my introduction to hotel ownership. Um, and so, yeah, it was unpaid. So I did about three months. I right. um, made the best decision I probably could have ever made. And what, what, what was that? Well, because it introduced me to hotel ownership. It introduced me to the commercial real estate side of things. Um, and I probably would have never 
gotten that opportunity or get into the ownership side without that opportunity um, because I knew in order for me to get into hotel ownership or to the ownership side of anything, I had to get that experience because I didn't go to school for finance or real estate. Mm-hmm. So my resume was far as lim- it was limited um, when it came to experience on that side. Okay. And uh, can you, you talk about how you actually um, got into like your first ownership opportunity, your first kind of deal in the hotel space? So so I'm going to answer that question two, two, two different ways. Right. Um, the first time was when I actually worked for a company and um, I would help hotel owners or potential hotel owners uh, get to the closing table or develop a deal. So the first hotel project I probably ever worked on um, from a development standpoint was years ago. Um, and that project, actually, they just received funding like 10, in 10 years. They finally received funding. So development projects take a long time. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was a big pro- a big project. It was a $180 million project. Okay. Uh, I never forget that. I never forget that project. Uh, it was fun working on. And what I did, um, I had to find different lodging accommodations and different brands, which will be the best brand to actually work for that particular site. So without okay. getting granular, um, there are a lot of different hotel brands, it's actually over a hundred different hotel brands. And when you're developing, um, there's the three things that makes a hotel successful, the location brand and um, the operator. So the land, okay. the land part was already identified. We just need to figure out the brand. I'm excuse me, the land was identified. We just needed to figure out the brand and the operator. And so as my job as an intern, I helped the senior consultant find those uh, two, two last recipes. So that was the first hotel project I worked on okay. um, with the company. The first hotel project I worked on by myself was the 85 room home two suites, El Reno, Oklahoma. Uh, we acquired that hotel, me along with other business partners, in uh, November 2020. Okay. And so, so the, the first one that took almost 10 years. So basically, you, you started off when it was basically a site, like a dirt lot or wherever it was until it, yeah, until it got dirt. built. That's what that 10 years? It was? hasn't even gotten built yet. It just received funding for it. Oh, oh, oh wow. And is that is that typical? It seems like a long time. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. okay. it's not uncommon. Okay. Okay. It's not uncommon. Oh. Okay, okay. Wow. That's why I so, always recommend when people want to buy a hotel first. I don't recommend development for that reason because you just it, sometimes it could it could be a lengthy process. Lengthy, oh, okay, okay, right, right, right that. Um, and so let's say me, I'm a 30 year old. I have, I guess, maybe decent income, no real experience. Um, where where would I start as far as hey, I want to I want to get into a ho- hotel ownership. Um. I would start with like determining your strategy, right? So I always say creating your ownership thesis. So figure out if you're a cash flow or equity person, right? Then figure out, you know, the area that you want to get into, right? So meaning, do you want to be close to home? Do you want to be near a university? Do you want to be near, you know, a lake or wherever? Like you need to kind of figure out the location, figure out if you want to buy or develop um, and really figure out the biggest thing is your but project budget okay meaning how much you can qualify for so a lot of people of course they would love to buy or develop a ritz carlton in their four seasons yeah. or you know w and it's like okay well those are you know nine figure sometimes projects right mm-hmm. and or upper eight figure projects so you know is that something that you can do um, so if you can't just yet, then I, you know, you can start off with the economy brand or, or maybe, a, 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 a um, I have an extended stay brand, which is the home two suites. Um, an economy brand will be something like a super eight, right? Okay. So those are the type of brands that, 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 that you can uh, kind of get into for someone just, and just seeing if, um, seeing if, um, Seeing if you want to invest or buy a hotel, right? Because some folks may just want to invest. Like, you may be like, Dave, you may be like, look, Dave, that sounds like a lot of work. I got my own thing going on. I really just want to focus maybe on multifamily. I don't really want to do the hotel project on my own, but I still want to invest and collect, collect some passive income. So you can go that route. 
Or some folks, they like total control. They want to do it themselves. And so they do more of the general partner route or the GP route. Um, and then they, they buy or develop the hotel. Okay. And um, go, going back to the price point, I know nothing is cheap in the hotel industry, buying a hotel, but kind of like when you talk about like the, the super eights and stuff like that, what is kind of like the, the minimum um, starting point you should kind of be looking at? Or what, what is kind of like the cheapest you probably can get into the industry? I'm just, just curious. Oh, wow. The cheapest to get into the the industry. Well, we we, we say like uh, you know, there's obviously the the W. Then there's like um, Motel Eight or something like that. Like, what what is the kind of like the price point for one of one of those? It varies. It's no, it varies because it depends on the market. So okay. it depends. Like, you can get a Super Eight in Orlando for you know for uh, um, I don't know for uh. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I'm just making up a number. Let's just say eight, eight figures or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but then you go to, you know, America's Georgia and it's half of that, half of the price. Okay. So it just depends on a the market. There's not like a, um, there's, there's no like. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Lo- 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 like say, yeah, location, location matters. So it could be in Los Angeles, it's one price and, uh, right. Nowhere. Like I know somebody, I think I saw somebody who's trying to buy a, a super eight or something or a best Western in Los Angeles and it was 13 million, but mm-hmm. you know, that same super eight, same footprint, same size and everything in America's Georgia could be like 3 million. Right. Yeah, gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha. It, it, it just, it, it varies. There's no, there's no like the super eight, all super eights across the country is this price. No, it okay. doesn't work that way. And how, how does the actual financing piece work? Um, like, uh, I know you, you buy a home, you can put down like three and a half percent or three percent. Like with the hotel, kind of how does that work as far as the, the financing like, piece? Oops, excuse me, it's like 20 to 30 percent. Okay. Okay. It's so like, assuming, like uh, assuming um, let's say I'm buying a $10 million hotel, assuming I have uh, $3 million laying around. Um, what, what, what else is like the, the lender looking at? They're looking at like, management experience you're looking at like business credit or kind of what else are they they evaluating so they're definitely looking at your personal profile so even if you had like some lenders if you know if you have bankruptcy or something like that they don't want to work with you um again they just go by some lenders but the biggest thing they want to see do you have experience so somebody on your team has to have experience so let's say you know dave you don't really this is your first time buying a hotel but you're capitalized right Mm -hmm. The lender's like, that's great. I'm happy for you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, who on your team has ever operated a hotel? Okay. So, and that's like the key factor. So remember what I said before about the location, brand, and operator? Those are the things that the lenders look for. Okay. Is it a great location? Who's the brand? And then who's going to operate it? So really the operation is probably more important than a lot of things because you can have a great location and a great brand but if you have the wrong operator it can drive that hotel you know into the hole oh okay okay roger that so okay so essentially kind of the operator it's probably looked at if you're talking about a house kind of like the credit profile essentially like how 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 much experience you've had doing doing this this or that okay right Um, like that's like okay have you do you remember staying at the bad hotel um uh bad uh yeah 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 i'll say yeah yeah you had a bad experience so so uh, me me personally i guess i've never have i'm pretty like a uh, laid back i just want to be left <laughs> left alone so um but yeah yeah i know i know what you're saying yeah no what i'm saying is you probably wouldn't go back right so let's say you yeah. say you like being left alone but people kept bothering you and you didn't have the best experience right and even someone like you who's probably just like whatever and they make you say horrible you probably wouldn't go back yeah yeah. that's the point i'm trying to make is somebody who's operating your hotel and they're not operating it and they're not focusing on those key things like making it a great experience with the guests people not gonna come back and like i said if it's the best location they're not gonna they're just not gonna come back they'll go to another yeah Yeah. and you talked about um a cash flow versus an equity hotel. Can you talk about the, the difference between those those two? Yeah, so a cash flow is more like more the economy, meaning that there's not a lot of expenses or line items. Um, equity meaning they... So and typically full service hotels or resorts, things that have more 
amenities like a spa, restaurant, all those expenses, those expenses have add up, right? The more expenses you have, the less that you're bringing down to your bottom line. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is there, is there a certain, um, I guess, do you lean one way or the other or is there, do you have any preference on cash flow versus equity? You want a good, a good portfolio would have a combination of both. You don't want to be too heavy on equity, meaning because then what, type what you need some cash flow to come in to support your business and to support your way of life right so what some people do their portfolio will be like a maybe a oh excuse me <coughs> oh excuse me it'll be a, a four seasons or something like that and then they may have like a super eight or like a home two suites or something because that hotel is given a lot of cash flow as opposed to they're holding on to the four seasons for whatever reason for portfolio or they're looking for whenever when they sell it they get their uh get a lot of um uh, the return get a higher return oh okay okay that that makes um sense um and so i go i meant to ask you kind of what, what is your portfolio just for the folks um folks listening so my portfolio has a lot of there's three hotels in the portfolio. It's a home, two suites, a stay bridge. Both of those hotels are extended stay hotels and then a Hampton in the suite. So those are more of the cash flow properties, but they do have their branded properties, um, but they're called what you're called institutional grade um, hotels. Okay. Okay. And let's go. Sorry. Yeah, I meant to ask this question. So uh, we talked about um, land, brand, and operator. So how, how do you go about securing like brands? Because obviously everyone wants the a nice brand name. But how do you go about securing different different brands for your site or for or getting a brand? Uh, well, you need that's something you definitely want to have a conversation with the brand to see if you can get approved. Um, okay. So that's always a big thing to make sure you get approved. You don't want to buy a hotel and you can't get approved, right? Mm -hmm. Every brand has different uh, brand requirements. And then buying a hotel or buying into a brand is like buying into a franchisee, right? So it's the franchise application, the FDD, all of that stuff. So a lot of times folks who are from the franchise world or who are experiencing franchising, they, it makes it easier for them to actually get into the hotel space or the hotel franchise space because they understand the franchising model. They just need someone to kind of up, up, operate it for them. Oh, okay, okay, makes makes sense. Um. um as we were talking before, I heard you um, on the uh, um, break period with uh, MG the Mortgage Guy. And you were to, on that call, you were talking about there's kind of like African American like friendly hotels or 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 that help um, help folks get into the the industry. Can you talk kind of about kind of about those those hotels? Yeah, there are some different programs. Choice has a program. Um, they have a diversity program where they provide incentives um, uh, for folks who are, these are more so for folks who want to develop hotels or um converting uh like let's say you could buy let's say you look at a school building or something like that it's an old school building you want to convert it to a hotel and you can convert it to choice so if it makes sense for it to be a choice property then choice will give you you know um incentive programs um Wyndham um they have a program for women it's called I think women own a room or something like that so Wyndham and choice are the two that really have a strong uh program or some type of program um to help minorities get into the ownership roles okay and, and there are those um and so do you need a certain level of experience or they or do they kind of like develop you in those programs eh, they kind of but they're the brand so it's only so much they can do so it's good to work with a, a consultant that can kind of really hold your hand because they only can hold your hand but so 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 far yeah mm -hmm. oh, okay um and from, from your perspective, how did COVID impact like the hotel industry? I know from the outside looking in, it seems like it kind of got hit pretty hard. Is that, yeah, was yeah, that is, okay? Yeah. Okay. Some markets like Miami performed well. It's like their levels are better than pre-COVID. A lot of the states that stayed open during COVID, you saw um, it, 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 it did pretty good. Um, like uh, hotels in uh, Texas and um, hotels in Florida. Okay. Uh, those are the hotels that um the hotels that took a big beating were like the big box hotels meaning like convention hotels the rooms that are like okay the hotels are like 800 or more rooms that those type of hotels took a beating because they need the, that group business in order to survive oh, okay, okay makes yeah, a lot of seem like a lot of corporate stuff and are, are you seeing that kind of like um bouncing back or do you, do you think do you think it's kind of 
Uh, I'm trying to say, so it, obviously it's at a level before COVID. Do you see it kind of getting back there or maybe leveling out a little bit below that? Or because I know some hotels probably couldn't weather the storm. Um, the issue right now in the hospitality industry, just, just like other industries, is the uh, labor. So just trying to find folks who want to work. It was a lot of layoffs during COVID um, and a lot of people didn't return. Um, so that's just the, been the issue. Okay. Um, um, it's just really like market specific. Really, some hotels are doing. Some hotels didn't let go any of their labor. Okay. Right? Um, so just it, I, you gonna hear me say this word a lot, but it really depends. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and so um, Air, Airbnb does the. I know you can't speak for the whole industry, but does the industry look at Airbnb as any kind of like? I would say like threat. Do you do you how do you how do you look at like Airbnb from your your perspective? Um, I think years ago when it first like really started gaining some traction, the hospitality industry just like it is with other threats. It take it took a while to kind of like wrap their brain around it, but now uh, there's a lot of you know the um, the hotel industry has different um, associations, um, um, uh, legislative associations that um, been starting to put a lot of regulations in place. Mm -hmm. um so it's more so i don't see airbnb like taking over hotels like matter of fact i think i just saw a quote somebody posted and was like you know i'd rather stay at a, a hotel than an airbnb because i don't work i don't want to work meaning i don't want to clean my room i want room service so people still want those type of amenities um that may not be you know offered in airbnb so i definitely don't see airbnbs you know, taking out, like, even when I go out of town for conferences, I'm staying at a hotel, mm -hmm. right? So I don't see it taking over. I see it definitely being a threat. Some markets, worse than others, like my hotel in El Reno, there's not even an Uber there, okay. right? Yeah. So I don't think there's, like, so an Airbnb wouldn't hurt my hotel. Now, if it was a, a probably Airbnbs in probably like New York or Miami or LA, then it's a little different, right? Because it's impacting the rate, right? It's mm -hmm. in, impacting folks staying at your hotel. So it's taking that 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 share, that market share away. But I don't, I mean, I don't see it going away. But yeah. you know, it was just something that the industry, I think, is just we just have to deal with it. Okay, Roger that. Um, and what um in, in like your 14 years or maybe recently, um, what are some of the some of the challenges you probably that you think folks probably don't may not uh, think about when they get into the industry as far as um you know this or that really more so the operations um a lot of people who get into the industry they come from different businesses so they're like oh you know it's just like running like this the hotel industry is a people business right um so you know take care of the guests take care of your employees um so operating business sitting on real estate so it's not just some folks who get in, they just look at it as just real estate. It's not just real estate. It's an operating business sitting on real estate. So that's why folks who don't understand hotels, they bring in folks that do to come and operate them for them. Um, so that's the biggest thing is um, really just, you know, if you never operated a hotel or ran a hotel, um, definitely bring us up. Now, I think folks would be great hotel owners would be folks who own a lot of Airbnb units. Okay. Because they have their systems in place, especially folks who own like 20 to 30 Airbnb units. For, in order for you to scale like that, you could definitely own a hotel because um, you understand how it operates. Meaning you're already essentially kind of owning a hotel, just not, you know, it's just in different places. Yeah, yeah the rooms aren't in the same building, essentially. Yeah, that's all. But I mean, you have your systems, you have your revenue management strategy, you have the sales and marketing strategy. You know, you have your housekeeping, you know, housekeeping, you know, how to contact the guests, follow up. It's pretty, you know, it's very similar. Oh, okay, thank you. And so um, how, how does one find like a, a good operator? Or what are some traits you think make up a good operator? You know, that being kind of one of the big three in your hotel being successful. Uh, really knowing the market. Um, really knowing the brand or getting approved by the brand. and um, who can who can bring the most value to the owners? Those are the probably the biggest things I will look at. Oh, okay, okay, got you. Um, and then um, if if there is something next, like what what's kind of on the the horizon, or what's the uh the 10, 15 year goal? Is it more? Is it um perfect what you have now, or work on what you have now? Expand the brand, kind of what's uh uh where you where's the uh the brand hit it? 
Uh, my brand, I definitely want to increase the percentage of African American hotel owners and investors. Okay. I do want to get a Hyatt. Mm, if you would have asked me like five years ago, I would have said I want to own like every single brand. Uh-huh. But nah, I'm not there. Um, I have three. I'm happy with my three and working on my fourth, which is getting a Hyatt. So, um, yeah, that's that's my plan. I'm working on um, a project I wish I could share. It's a little different, but it's still hotel related. So I'm just thinking of, um, I guess, different ancillaries, working on different ancillaries um, to the hotel. Still hotel industry specific, just not an actual hotel. Oh, okay, got you. Let me ask this um, early, but where are, where are your um, three hotels located? At? Are they all local to you? or mm-hmm. The El Reno is in Oklahoma. The Hotel Suites is in El Reno, Oklahoma. The State Bridge in the Indianapolis, I mean, the State Bridge, Indianapolis, Fishers, and the Hampton and Suites, Scottsburg, um, they're both in Indiana. Hampton and in Suites is in Scottsburg, which is outside of Louisville, and then the um, State Bridge in the Suites. I mean the State Bridge Suites and um uh what do you call it um in Indianapolis. Okay, and how, how'd you go about um finding those those locations? I don't know if they, they found you maybe and reached out, or how'd you go about those locations? Definitely relationships. Um, I get deals all the time. I mean, I take on them, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, definitely relationships you know, getting in contact with brokers so they can, you know, get you on their list and give you a call when it's a good deal. Oh, okay, Roger that. Now, you touched on it a little bit, you know, increasing the number of uh, African-American, African-American hotel owners. You kind of talk about your, your community and kind of some of the, the training you do to help kind of folks get into that. Yes, yeah, so I have I have courses. I have um, a book coming out, uh, How to Buy a Hotel, um, Roadmap to Hotel Ownership, um yeah so i have all that uh all of that stuff okay okay cool um and so um kind of the 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 last question i always ask folks is um and maybe this is a little bit low for uh your industry but um if you had a million dollars um and you had like a week to spend it on real estate or real estate adjacent stuff what would you what would you do with it Ooh, million dollars. I diversify it. I probably partner with somebody on a hotel and partner with somebody on a multifamily. Then okay. maybe you can get even getting a couple Airbnbs too. And I get a daycare. Oh, okay, okay. That's something you've always wanted to get into the, the daycare business or all right, why 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 daycare? Just curious. Cause I have a child and I spend a lot of money at daycare. And so when I go there, I'm like, I count off the student. <laughs> okay, yeah, like yeah, I'm paying X and there's 20 kids here. Okay. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, maybe I should just get a daycare too. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that. yeah, I mean, it's a good cash flow. I didn't realize how much they made from a cash flow perspective until I started talking to other daycare owners. Uh-huh. Um, and then their struggles are pretty much the same struggles I have. So it's just like, oh, okay. Um, let me just diversify my portfolio. Same thing with multifamily, you okay. know. Um, struggles a little different, but um, but yeah, I would I would do that way. I would diversify, dibble, dabble into a multifamily daycare and a hotel. Oh, okay, okay, awesome. Um, pr- appreciate uh your your time. Um, thank you for that question. Gotta... Nobody's ever asked me that before. What, what's that? Nobody's ever asked me that before. Oh, what the, thank, thank you. And so, um, I know you have to actually, I think, head to to a daycare somewhere in, in a little bit. Um, so we're um, but uh, where where can the folks actually find you and kind of touch base with you and kind of get some of the the courses training or you know whatever? Um, sure. To, Follow uh, me on Instagram at Davon Reeves. I have a Facebook group, Black Hotel Investors Facebook group. So definitely stay connected with me. Um, everything is on my my Instagram. On um, I'm on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. So you can find me. Oh, okay, okay. And so all that information will be in the um, description on the YouTube channel and the podcast, wherever you listen to this. So yeah, yeah, de- definitely linking. Cause like I said, that's a super interesting topic. Um, like I said, before I uh, heard they had the breaking bread thing, I never would even thought about that industry. Like I said, I always thought it was just, you know, um, like I said, I don't know what your financial picture is, but I always thought it was people with millions and millions of dollars and, you know, uh, suits and monocles, like buying, <laughs> buying hotels. So 
Yeah. Now, actually, the Indi- so the Indian community, the East Asian community, they own over 60% of the hotels and, well, really, motels in the United States. And they mm-hmm. started off with, you know, with the community, you know, mom and pop, and they just got their cousins and sisters and uncles and aunties to invest, and they grew. They started off with, like, a Super 8 or a motel, and they grew their portfolio, um, and they were able to grow, so... Um, once I realized their model, I said, okay, this is something as a community we can do this too. Even we've been doing this before. Uh, we just kind of forgot, you know, forgot about this. Black folks, we've been owning hotels since the 1800s, right? Okay. Uh, so this, is, this isn't new. I'm just reintroducing it, just reminding us. Okay, okay. And so um, so we said we've been owning hotels in eight, since the 1800s, like in certain... In certain pockets, because I, I wouldn't even, I know there's, I think of, you know, everyone thinks of like, you know, Black Wall Street and stuff like that, but just kind of all over the United States there, there were a bunch of Black hotels. Did they go away and come back or? Uh, well, during, during segregate, so it was called the Green Book. Um, if you should Google it, the Green Book. Um, oh, goodness, I can't think of his name. It was by Mr. Green. He okay. broke the book. And basically, uh, during the uh, pre-civil rights, the pre-civil rights movement, we couldn't, what I even say pre-civil rights, but pre-integration, Mm-hmm. Uh, black folks couldn't stay at white-owned establishments. Okay. Um, and so he created what is called a green book. So when people travel from up north down to south, they could stay at black-owned hotels. Okay. And actually, black folks was the original Airbnbs because it's actually houses listed in the green books. Okay. So folks wanted to stay at other folks' houses, they would list their house there, and it would be it's like black-owned hotels, gas stations. Um, and so the reason why a lot of the black hotels closed down because once hotels became integrated, meaning white folks started letting black folks stay at hotels, at their hotels, um, black folks stopped staying at black owned establishments. So there was a hotel in Charleston. I mean, there's hotels in, um, uh, goodness, uh, Raleigh and mm-hmm. all of the different uh, in New York and Atlanta. It was a lot of different black owned establishments, bed and breakfasts, uh, where in um, Selma, Alabama, you know, during the civil rights movement, you know, where, you know, where did, you know, our, our you know, our leaders such as, uh, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King and Ambassador Andrew Young, you know, they had to stay at certain places because they couldn't stay away on establishment. So, mm-hmm. yep. So this is, this is nothing new to us as far as black folks own a hotel. Okay. Um, and I know I said I was wrapping this up a little bit ago. One last question. If you could, um, if you had a magic wand, you could change like maybe one thing or or do one thing to like uh, to encourage or increase um, hotel ownership in our community. Like what, what would it be? Um, it would be awareness and education. Okay. And I think that would help us become more capitalized if we have the education. So, you know, having platforms like yourself and, you know, uh, earn your leisure uh, their community so I'm thankful shout out to MG for bringing me on for breaking bread you know mm-hmm. having that type of information and knowledge and sharing that information just like you said okay I didn't know I could own a hotel I thought it was the brand owner I thought it was this gazillionaire who owned it so I didn't think someone like me so I think once we start changing folks mindset and getting us from the consumer mindset to the owner mindset um, I think that'll definitely change it Okay, thank you. I promise this is actually the last question. I know I've said this three times now. Um, you pointed out a stat during that call that was kind of interesting to me. Like, what what percentage of um, hotels are actually owned by individuals? It was a larger number than I, than I thought it was. So out of the 55,000 hotels in the United States, over 60% of the hotels are actually owned by small businesses. Mm-hmm. So that means if you and I, we come together, we partner and buy a hotel, we create an LLC that's considered a small business, right? Um, it's less than 2% of the hotels are owned by African-Americans and then less than 1% of the hotels are actually owned by, um, African-American women. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I never thought of that. I just thought, you know, big corporations. So you see like the, the Motel 8s and stuff like that is like, assume, you know, smaller families, but yeah, I never, never thought about that. Over half the, uh, hotels are owned just by, by people who, uh, who made, who made the leap. So, um, um, yeah, so hopefully if you're, you're out there listening, you can uh, make that make that leap. Definitely uh, tap in with her. Once again, all the info you need will be in the bio to uh, to reach out and uh, start your hotel ownership journey. So um, once again, appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. And there is no outro to the show, so it is over.
Bye. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you.